नमो नमः स्वागतम सर्वेभ्यः सो वेलकम नाउ टू द लास्ट ऑफ आवर सेगमेंट्स दैट आर लुकिंग एट द गणास ऑफ द प्रेजेंट टेंस द लेट लेट्स टर्न नाउ टू द लास्ट ऑफ आवर नॉन अ गणास द सेवेंथ क्लास और द रुद गणा दिस इज नेम्ड आफ्टर द वर्ब रुद which means to block or prevent or impede and it gets conjugated as runadhi he she or it blocks uh, impedes or rundanti they block or impede in the plural like with the non agana like with all the other non agana's class 7 verbs we'll have these strong stems versus weak stems strong stems are used in the parasmai pada singular weak stems are used everywhere else including all of the atmane pada forms Also like all of our non-agana verbs the in the atmane pada endings we're not we're going to have our ate and athe in the duals in the third person and second person and we're going to have ate in the third person plural Now how do we form seventh class strong stems and weak stems you ask well get ready hold on to your seats uh, all seventh class verbs are of the form cvc consonant vowel consonant to make a strong stem you're going to insert inside that a n and a, a n syllable in inside the stem so you get c v n c uh to get a weak stem you just insert the consonant n the nakara so that you get c v n c uh this n will then have to assimilate to whatever consonant class is of the second consonant Uh, so for example in the case of the very very common seventh class root bhuj which means to eat or enjoy uh, we're going to get bunaj as the strong stem with the infixed n syllable and then we'll have bunj as the weak stem where you insert the n right after the vowel but it's going to now assimilate to a palatal n because of the j so from the root bhuj we get the strong stem bunaj the weak stem bunj But now guess what because both of these stems are ending in consonants this means we're going to have some tricky fun fun and tricky sandhi issues uh when we're conjugating seventh class in the parasmai pada singulars we'll be we, we'll be using that strong stem bunaj then we when you add the we get a sandhi uh first the th kara uh because it's unvoiced you lose the voicing which is at the end of bunaj the j becomes a ch bunaj But now remember palatals are unstable and it's going to jump up to a velar. That makes the form bunakti. He she it eats. He she it enjoys. Uh bunaj plus c is going to do the same first you lose the voicing to become bunaj then it jumps up to bunak but then the sibilant now is going to retroflex itself and we end up with bunakshi. You eat you enjoy. Finally there's no sandhi which happens when you add mi to bunaj you just get bunaj mi i eat i enjoy and now the other forms we're going to use the weak stem bunj and we'll get bunkta the two of them are eating notice here that not only has the palatal j jumped up to the velar k the g kakara the palatal nasal ny has now become the velar nasal n kara so we get bun bun uh, bunkta Now for the plural we get bunjanti they eat you want you am bunkta you too eat and you yam bunkta you eat or enjoy plural for th- first person we'll have bunjwa and bunjma we plural eat or enjoy another common verb is the seventh class root yuj to yoke or join or control this is the yuj, yuj is the root of the uh, term yoga right Uh, which you might be familiar with so it might be good to be familiar with the root how to conjugate the root the root yuj actually gets pro- it'll get processed into the strong stem yunaj and the weak stem yunj where the infix nasal assimilates to the palatal nasal uh, and then it's going to look basically exactly like bhuj uh, in the paradigm it's a ya instead of a and for us maybe you get yunakti he joins harnesses controls she joins harnesses controls tom yunakshi you join harness or control aham you nudge me i join harness control uh in the rest of the paradigm we use the weak stem now yunj and the same kind of sandhi is going to take place uh as we saw with buj yunkta they both join or control or harness yunkta you both control join or harness 
Amam Yunjua, we to uh, unite, join, or control. Plural will be Yunjanti, they join, harness, control. Uh, there's no su- a change because of the Sunday here. Then Yunkta, you join, harness, control. Or Wayam Yunjmaha, we join, harness, control. Let's look at the Atmanipada forms now. Uh, you're actually quite likely to encounter Atmanipada just as much as Parasmipada. Here we're going to use the weak stem again, right? We get yunkte, uh, he, jo- she, it joins, harnesses, controls. Yunjate, they both join, harness, or control. Yunjate, the three or more, they three or more join, harness, control. Notice again, singular, dual, plural are very, very similar to each other. Second person, we get tuam yunkshe, you join or control or harness. The ja has become a vilirka, the sibilant has retroflexed itself, yunkshe. Yuam yunjate, you two, you both join harness control. The second person plural, we're going to have something interesting. Yuyam yungdue, here the ja has jumped up to vilir, but since the da is voiced, it retains the voicing and becomes ga giving us yung plus dwe, yung dwe. You all join harness control. For the first person, it's fairly easy. Aham yunje, I join harness or control. Awam yunjwahe, we both join harness and control. Or wayam yunjmahe, we three or more join harness or control. There's several other uh, seventh class verbs uh, to think about each of which will have these kinds of idiosyncrasies of sandhi uh, just to keep us all on our toes. For example, there's the root chid, which means to cut. Uh, and this becomes chinatti, he cuts, or chindanti, they cut. Uh, then there's bid, which means to split, break apart, to separate. This becomes binatti, she breaks or splits. Uh, they bindanti, they break or split. Uh, to close things off, let's look at the verb rud now, which is to means to block, stop, or prevent. Uh, this is the class uh, root, of course, it's, the class is named after it. It's going to have a few more sandhi oddities than all of the other roots, so get set. Uh, first, you take the root rud. Now, you're going to uh, make the, st- the strong stem is going to be runad. Here, there's a, a, a the, you, the infix na has now retroflexed because of the preceding ra, the rakara. Uh, this is that internal R Sandhi rule. If you've forgotten that one. Uh, so it's not runad, it's runad. For the weak stem, we just infix the consonant N, the nakara by itself. Now the na stays dental because the dhakara is a dental. So in other words, the assimilation of na to dha blocks the internal R Sandhi rule from happening. But now, because we have in both uh, strong and weak stems, we have a voiced aspirate at the end. We'll have runad and rund. We're going to get some tricky sandhi just about in every form. Uh, so in the third person singular, we'll have runad plus ti. Here, instead of losing the voicing or aspiration to match the unvoiced, unaspirated dental ti, eh? instead what's going to happen is the ti gains voicing and aspiration the aspiration migrates over so that the cluster becomes runadhi. You're just going to have to remember that. I'm sorry about that. But the third person singular of rud is runadhi. He, she, it blocks, stops, prevents. The other two strong forms are a bit easier. Tuam runat si. Here the, the aspiration is gone. You, you block, stop, or prevent. The th has lost its voicing and aspiration. It just becomes the th uh, with the runat si. Then we have aham runad mi. There's no sandhi changes, thankfully enough, for that one. I st- block, stop, prevent. In the others, we're going to now use the weak stem rund and get runda. The two of them block, stop, or prevent. Here again, the aspirated voiced dental makes the taha assimilate that way. Uh, runda. We'll have rundanti. They block, stop, or prevent. For second person dual, we're going to get runda. You both block, stop, prevent. Notice, this is exactly the same as the third person duel. Just happens sometimes. Uh, the, similarly, we're going to get yuyam runda. You three or more block, stop, prevent. For the first person, we'll have awam rundwa. We both block, stop, prevent. And finally, wayam rundmaha. We three or more block, stop, prevent. So there you have it. The tricky, sandy, heavy, 
seventh gana, where we turn the root into a stem by infixing the syllable na, or just the consonant nakara. And with that, we've reached, believe it or not, the end of our series on how to conjugate the verb roots in the present system, which is called the Vartamane Lat. If you're feeling overwhelmed, don't worry, don't fret. It's totally normal to, to feel overwhelmed with verbs. Just start practicing one or two examples from each of the ten ganas. Work first with the aganas, which are easier, then turn to your non-aganas. And be sure to learn first the third person singulars and plurals for each one, and then the first person singulars and plurals for each one. Try then learning parasmai pada and atmane pada forms. Those are what you'll encounter the most, and those are what you should master first. Then move on to learning the second person forms, and then finally the duals, the second column, which is the rarest forms that we're going to encounter in the wild. Uh, the more you practice generating these forms and creating basic sentences in your head with one or two verbs from each class, the easier things are going to start to become when you see more and more of what sounds and feels right. Remember, just practice these for 15 minutes a day intensely, one form at a time, one gana at a time, and eventually you'll get faster and stronger at this stuff, and you'll become more confident in your knowledge of Sanskrita, the language of the gods. So till our next unit, I thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed your journey so far. We're just getting started. We're just getting to the good stuff now. I hope to see you again in our next unit. Until then, Udarmilamaha and Yawadaha.